Everybody, can I have your attention? I'm going to go, go ahead and get started here. Um, I'm actually surprised that there are this many people in the room. I thought everybody was going to be going to the IT budgeting presentation. And so I expected there would only be about five of, of you guys in the whole room. Um, also, uh, before I get started, uh, Angela just right now mentioned to me, she said, are you going to say, tell a joke? And I thought, a joke? Uh, law school technology, this is no joking matter. We've got to be serious here. So, um, no, I'm not going to start with a joke. I'm going to start more traditionally. And that is, my name is Andrew Gerthet, and I am the Director of Technology for Santa Clara University Law School. And for those of you who are not familiar, familiar with Santa Clara University, it's a small Jesuit university uh, located in Santa Clara, California. And we are about 20 miles south of Stanford University. And I like to think that Stanford, University, or Stanford Law School is our greatest competitor. Um, but unfortunately, they have us beat pretty much on everything, uh, except one thing. <laughs> and that one thing uh, they can't take away from us. And that is, I've been told that Santa Clara University is the oldest university west of the Mississippi. Uh, and it was uh, founded in 1851. The law school has been there since 1912 and has approximately 1,000 students. Um, and that includes our, we have an evening and part-time program. So uh, before beginning and getting into the heart of this presentation, there's a couple of things I want to address. The, the first is administratively. Um, Angela and I, who will be introducing herself in just a second, uh, have, would like to hold uh, questions to the end. And that is we've prepared this presentation each individually. And this will be the first time we put it together, and we have no idea whether it will be done at 9.45 or actually at 10.30. <laughs> so we'll have to see how this goes. So we'd like to save questions to the end. Uh, the other thing is there are some handouts at the door. If you didn't get those, please feel free to pick it up. It's our contact information and just a kind of sh a short synaps synopsis of uh, this presentation. Um, the other thing is there is a sign-up sheet there, and the sign-up sheet is – for those of you who would like to actually receive uh, the CD-ROM that we're going to be talking about today, um, it actually there's actually only one golden CD-ROM right now, and that's in this computer. Uh, the manufacturing of the thousand more is going to be happening next week, I believe. So we will have plenty of these things uh, in a week, but we don't have them right now, unfortunately. So if you'd like to sign up and put your email or your address there, uh, we will send it, uh, a CD to you so you can actually take a look at it and play with it at home. Okay, why don't we do that? Can someone just kind of pass that around? The other quick thing I should let you know is um, I am not trained as a technologist. I am a law librarian by training. And you will see in the little brochure under um, – this presentation, it says technical, I think it says technical level or technical skills, and then it says low. That's because of me. <laughs> so just keep that in mind when uh, we're going through this, and especially with your questions. I, I'll probably defer those all to Angela. So let me have Angela introduce herself. Hi, my name is Angela Hum, and if you drive about 45 minutes north of Santa Clara, you'll find Oz Studio. We're based in San Francisco. And we're a small design company that specializes in interactive, interactive design and print design. That's me. Okay. Um, one L orientation. The orientation of the incoming law students. Uh, I don't know for your law schools, but for Santa Clara, it is um, – personally, I find it a very ugly process. It, uh, it's mostly paper, and it is a lot of, of this, actually, of students coming into classrooms, sitting down and listening to someone like me make a presentation about the law school, uh, whatever information there needs to be given to the students. Um, my proposal and what I'm trying to present today and what I'm trying to get you guys jazzed on, so to speak, uh, to go back and try at your own law school is to have that process that – that 1L orientation be fully electronic, at least from the law school's point of view. Now, let me explain that a little more in detail um, before we actually get into the heart of this. Um, having gone to law, uh, law school myself and been through the orientation process and then 
uh, experienced it firsthand at Santa Clara, and then for the research I've done here, it appears to me that orientation can be really divided into two purposes. There's the, uh, the law school purpose, and then there's the law student purpose. And the two are completely opposite. Uh, and the two shall never meet, actually. The law school purpose is to communicate information to the law students about the law school. And that is the, the purpose that I think most of us are familiar with and actually have been involved in uh, over the past years or whatever in your different law schools. Um, there's a lot of departments, when you think about it, there's a lot of departments that need to get information across to the students, such as the law library has to tell about li library hours and that there's no smoking in the library and how to check out books and all that, uh, how to reserve a carol and conference room. Um, there's the records departments, there's the student services uh, departments have to tell the students uh, what is acceptable conduct and what is not acceptable conduct. And um, there's the dean's office, and not, you know, last but not least is computer services. And at least at Santa Clara, there's a lot of information that computer services has to get across to those students in the three days that we have our orientation. And I like to think that we are the, the single biggest and most important player. But um, every time we get together in the meetings before, I find I'm just one of many in, in the planning of all this. Um, but we have to get across to the students how to set up email accounts, about our eCampus system, about our, our own internal uh, intranet and what the passwords are for that, and how to use that. Uh, we have to make sure all the students are configured, their laptops are configured for our network. We also have now a wireless system, so we have to have, make sure they're configured for that. Um, we also have a recommended laptop program and everything else. It, there's endless amount of information that has to be given to those students. And how we do it is we have a lab that has a total of approximately 30 computers, and we have 350 students. And so when you do the math on that, if you take one hour for each 30 students over three days, uh, at the end of the three days, it's, it's a total burnout for the computer services staff trying to, to orientate these students. Um, so that is the law school purpose for orientation. And on the flip side of it is the law student purpose for orientation, or at least the purpose that I went into law or for into orientation for, and that is to find a buddy and to find a friend quickly. Um, all the information that the law school gives to the student is, not, is nice from their point of view, um, but their thinking, or at least my thinking was, I will, I'll cross that bridge when I, when I need to. Um, when I get kicked out for smoking in the library, then I will know that it's not allowable. <laughs> and when I need to actually look a book up on the online catalog, I'll ask the reference librarian. Though actually I never did because I was too intimidated <laughs> at the time. That's a little funny that I ended up being a librarian after all. Um, anyway, that, so the, what was really important to the law students is trying to create a, a support network very quickly among their peers so that um, it kind of eased their, the transition in, uh, to law school, make it easier for them. Um, they also, it's very important for them to meet their faculty, if for no other reason than to find out if the, the rumors they're hearing are, are true or not. Um, is it really as bad as, as they think it is, or have been told it is? So um, that is the real purpose for, for the law students in orientation. And so my proposal is that the, the law school purpose of getting information across to the students should take a second kind of a back seat, so to speak, to the law student's purpose. And the way to do that is by uh, making all of the orientation process from the law school, all the information that needs to be given to these students, make it elect, uh, available electronically and make it available before orientation, several weeks, in fact, before. You mail it out to the students. Give them time to go through that information, digest it, get themselves prepared so that when they actually show up on campus and are at law school, that those first days, they can spend more time developing their, um, their network, meeting their faculty, getting themselves just physically situated on the campus, learning where, uh, for me, <laughs> where the, the uh, nearest beer was. <laughs> um, so things like that are very important. And so that is my proposal. And that uh, is what I've been working on for the last couple of years at Santa Clara. And Santa Clara is not the first to go down this road. Um, 
when I originally got the idea and started to look, I found that a number of law schools have already started to tack, so to speak, down the road. At this point, though, I'd like to think that Santa Clara is further along than the majority of those law schools, and if not at least along in development, at least in the philosophy that all of the orientation should be electronic. So before going in and actually showing you what we've developed to date, I want to spend a few minutes also talking about the process, because I mentioned it's actually taken two years to get to this point, to stand in front of you. And when I initially had this idea, I never thought that I'd actually be at Cali making a presentation about it. So it's actually kind of nice. So I'll have to enjoy standing up here. But I want to talk about the process, because I hit a lot of potholes, and there were a lot of snags, and there were a lot of outright roadblocks in the two years that I went down this road. And I don't think, in looking back, that that is unique to me or Santa Clara. I think that every law school is going to have, and every, well, I should take it back, every person who, whether you're a technologist or not, or whoever you are, who takes this project on or tries to lead it forward is going to run into these exact same roadblocks. And so I want to take the time and just kind of quickly explain that, because it's very easy to get discouraged. As I mentioned earlier, the process until right now for Santa Clara has been to march students in 30 at a time, spend one hour, teach them everything they need to know, and then march them out, and then march in the next 30. After doing that two years ago, I met with the computer services staff, and we decided there had to be an easier way of doing it. And the initial idea was, let's just build a website. And during orientation, we'll just stand up and tell them, here's the web, go to that, and there's all the information, and you're on your own. The problem with that, after we kind of thought about it more, is that it's too passive. You're expecting the students, you're giving the students a URL, and you're hoping that they're going to go to that and spend time looking at that web page. And given that they're all concerned about meeting friends and getting their ID card squared away and financial aid, the last thing they're going to do is go into a lab and sit down and type in this URL and look at it. So we decided that there had to be a better way of reaching them. And we hit upon the idea of a CD-ROM. And we'd actually mailed the CD-ROM several weeks before. And the idea behind the CD-ROM is that it's actually something physical that arrives in their mailbox, and it's going to be designed up nicely, and it'll say Santa Clara Law School on it. And we're hoping that it will pique their curiosity to put it in their machine. And it won't be a postcard just showing up in the mail like so much other junk mail, saying go to this URL for more information. So that's why we came up with a CD-ROM. And we've stuck to the idea of a CD-ROM because of that, because we want something that's actually physical in their hands. I initially then approached the heads of the different departments that are involved in orientation, the library, records, student services, and the dean's office, and talked to them about the idea. And they all were very positive of it until I mentioned the need for money. Our computer services department didn't have the staff and the resources to develop it in-house. And so I needed to hire a consultant to help us. And there came in the issue of funding, and that's when everybody left. And I left it as another of Andrew's great ideas, so to speak, and it's not going anywhere. I decided that maybe it would be better to actually work from the top down. So instead of going to the different departments, I decided to go to the associate dean and talk to her, and then she could direct the departments to get on board with me, and that would be much easier. I hired a consultant very quickly and paid a couple hundred dollars to him to design up a mock so that I could present the idea to the associate dean and have her just rave over it and love it and give me all the money I needed and then tell the departments what they needed to do. Unfortunately, that didn't happen at all. She didn't see any need to change orientation, didn't think that it was 
the funding didn't, wasn't willing to give any funding, funding for it and said that it was great for me to explore it in, on the computer services level, but uh, she, she was, didn't feel comfortable also directing these other departments, of some of which she didn't have direct control over. Um, so it kind of went nowhere. Uh, I, one thing I, maybe it's, uh, <laughs> it's actually probably stupidity because I, uh, as this, I, once I'm into something, I don't let go, and that included law school. I knew right away when I was in law school that I didn't like it, uh, but I gutted it out to the very end. <laughs> And um, I've been recovering ever since, actually. <laughs> but uh, and the same was true with this. I wasn't willing to let it go at that level either. I um, made a presentation and a proposal to the, the law school's tech steering committee, which is set up specifically for this reason, to allow funding for interesting projects in the law school that are technologically uh, based. Um, I made the presentation, and that was the only project that was refused that year. <laughs> so. Part of the problem, I was already at a disadvantage going into it because the associate dean is the head of that. <laughs> that. So, but uh, she actually was not kind enough to let to stay out of the vote and let the rest of the committee vote, and they still mixed it. So I was very bummed, to say the least, because I, I, I truly thought I was onto a good idea. Um, I decided at that point to try Big Brother, and by Big Brother I mean Lexus and Westlaw. I would go to them, and they could stamp Lexus or Westlaw all over the CD-ROM. I didn't care. I just wanted the money. Um, so I, I think it was Lexus that I approached. And um, Lexus, they were actually were very interested in it, willing to give the money. Uh, but they didn't want to put Lexus on the CD-ROM. They wanted the, how legal research and writing was taught at Santa Clara changed. Um, and that was something. <laughs> And I, <laughs> that was something that I had no control over, and I, you can probably imagine where they wanted it, how they wanted it changed. Um, unfortunately, I had no control over that, so that kind of went nowhere. And uh, at that point, I was pretty discouraged, thinking, I, you know, three strikes, I'm out, and there's nowhere at this point to go. Um, but then I had a, a quick idea. Did you have an idea at this time about how much it was going to cost? Yes, the initial consultant that we hired, he said, "Oh, I can do a quick one up for probably 11 to 15,000. Actually, 10 to 15,000 is what he said." Um, and so that's what I was going towards. Um, I my last strike effort was with to go over to the law school and go directly to the university, um, to the larger university, and apply to their tech steering committee. Um, so I put in a proposal there and went and actually made a presentation at that committee and was told as I was leaving by one of the committee members that I stood a 0% chance of, of, of being approved from them because, one, I was not a faculty member, and two, it did not have a strong teaching component to it. And I argued otherwise that we were teaching the law students everything they needed to know about the electronic environment at the law school, but uh, they told me that there was a small chance it was going to be approved there. But uh, lo and behold, about three weeks la later, I get an email from the, the head of the committee saying that it was approved. And the reason it was approved was because the larger university had already seriously considered doing this for their undergraduate um, orientation, uh, putting everything on a CD-ROM or in some electronic format. And they had not really pursued it other than through the initial discussion phases. And if the law, they were willing to throw money at the law school, if the law school was willing to do the legwork and we were kind of the, the little test rat, so to speak, and if it is a failure, then they look at it and say, wow, we only lost X amount on this. We could have lost all this. So that's where it stands right now, actually, with the larger university. It's funded completely from them, and it's independent of the law school. Uh, which makes for some interesting payment systems, I have to say. Um, the university constantly kicks it back to me saying it has to go through the law school, and I have to constantly walk over there and tell them, no, it's, it has nothing to do with the law school. Um, but anyway, um, at that point, I was very excited, very jazzed again about this pro idea, and I went back to the initial consultant that I had hired and sent him an email saying, we're on board, let's go forward, we're going to make this work. And his email bounced back. Uh, he wasn't there. So I called him up, and the phone number was disconnected. <laughs> and I went so far, I figured at this point it had already been a year or more out 
from the initial idea that I'll take the time and I'll actually write him a letter and please contact me. So I wrote him a letter and about three weeks later that came back of no such person at the address. So I don't have a clue what ever happened to that consultant. And I actually count myself very lucky that it didn't go through. Um, I don't know what would have happened <laughs> had he, uh, had I been able to contact him. Um, so anyway, uh, at that point I was left looking for another consultant and uh, fortunately at the time we had hired a new webmaster who actually is in the room right here, Sid. And he recommended uh, Studios and Angela and I contacted them and that's how Angela got involved. And I'm now going to turn it over to Angela to talk about her involvement in it. And then we are going to do a tour of what we have developed, um, the golden CD-ROM, so to speak. And then uh, I'll talk about future uses afterwards. Thanks, Andrew. I guess it was lucky for us that uh, his original consultant disappeared. <laughs> but um, I'm here to go over a few things about technology and the design of the orientation CD. Um, first thing I want to talk about is system requirements. The second thing is software and tools that we use to create this orientation CD. And lastly, we want to talk a little bit about piracy and how we handle piracy. So this orientation CD is PC and Mac compatible. Um, we ask that the users have Pentium 3 500 megahertz system or better. Um, for Mac OS, of Mac users, we ask that they have OS 9 or above. The CD does require an internet connection, um, so users must have at least a 56K modem or faster. And the only plugin that's required is QuickTime. And if they don't have this already installed on the computer, the benefit of the CD is it'll do, it'll, it'll do an automatic detection at the very beginning, and it'll, it'll pop up a message telling the user they need to install it if they don't already have it. So a little bit about the software and tools we use. The authoring tools we use to create the CD is Macromedia Flash and Macromedia Director. We also use Photoshop and Microsoft for the creation of the PDFs. The nice thing about of the CD that there are no additional plugins needed except QuickTime if they don't already have it. So some of you may, may be wondering what is Director? Um, Macromedia Director is a multimedia authoring tool that is typically, typically used for CD-ROM development. It's robust and it allows for flexibility in pulling together multimedia content. So a few examples of flexibility. Flash animations are able to be embedded in Director files. Director is able to look on the user's hard drive, as I mentioned earlier, for any missing plugins. And also, the director has a way of taking over the desktop, so there's a more dramatic, I guess, presentation of the information on the CD. And you'll see what I mean when we show you the presentation. What is Flash? Many of you may be familiar with Flash, having surfed a lot of websites and seen a lot of eye candy. Flash uh, by itself is typically used as a web creation, um, content creation tool for animation. And because Director and Flash are both Macromedia products, we found it to be very compatible to use for this project. Just a little bit about Adobe Acrobat. Um, we designed this orientation CD to have PDFs embedded within the presentation. And you'll see what I mean when we show you the presentation. Um, there's one exception that we discovered, Mac OS 10 users cannot have this embedded feature, but we were able to work around that. And lastly, piracy. Andrew raised a, an important question um, as the project was almost coming to, to a close. What if somebody wanted to take the dean's video and alter what he says? And we thought, you know, that's, that's pretty bad if somebody did that. But we, we, we have to prepare ourselves, I guess, for that kind of situation. So we were able to make files invisible on the CD to make it a little harder for the average computer user to, to find these files. But um, we do realize that any computer expert would still be able to find these if they really wanted to and do whatever they want with them. But we're, hope, we're hoping that would deter them. Another, um, another thing is a copyright protection notice will also be printed on the CD. So um, 
We hope that that would also deter people from wanting to copy the design or content or alter anything. And that's, that's all about technology for this city. The one thing that once we got going on this, I mentioned that it was very important for us to reach all the students and hence the reason for a CD-ROM versus a web page or some other format. The other thing that became very evident when we started to get into it is my initial idea was just to have a CD-ROM with text documents on it and they would open that and that's where all the information would be. The problem with that is the fear that even though we may pique their curiosity with the CD arriving in the mail several weeks before and they're going to be going to school and they're starting to get nervous, once they put it in their computer and boot it up and they see all this boring text, they're going to click two pages and then be gone. And they'll worry about that when, as I mentioned earlier, when they get to that bridge. So it became very important for me in communicating with Angela that the CD-ROM had to be attractive and it had to be packaged in such a way that it would draw the student in and really get them involved and get them down into those layers where the information was and appeal to them. And so that brought in design objective. And that is what I, at least from the other, doing a lot of research on this, I've seen what other law schools have done who have gone down this road. And to date, the one thing that I caution you about doing if you're going to do this yourself is design is very, very important. A lot of the CD-ROMs or floppy disks that I've seen are nothing but Word documents or just basic text documents. And those don't appeal to the students. And so if you think about design, for us, and when you think about design in our situation, you're thinking about the typical Santa Clara law student. And the typical Santa Clara law student, at least for the graduating class of 2002, there's, let me double check this, there was 54% are women and 46% are men. So there are more women than men. The other thing is there's 43% students of color. And diversity is very, very important for Santa Clara. And I've been told that, whether this is indeed true or not, but Santa Clara is the most diverse, has the most diverse student body of any California law school. And given that California is a fairly diverse state, that's kind of saying something. So that was something that was very important in designing this, is we did not want to, we just didn't want to turn off large segments of our student body either because, and the other thing is the average age, as you probably know within your own law schools, is 26 for Santa Clara. So we didn't want to turn them off by presenting them with something that would appeal to the 50-year-old or the, you know, to the 40-year-old or the, you know, the 15-year-old. We had to hit the right age. We had to hit the right demographics. So that was the, for me, the very important consideration in designing the CD was that it would be attractive. So I'm going to turn it back over quickly to Angela to talk about, because that was my directions to her, and that's all I told her. So she had to take it from there. And actually, I'm sorry, but I should just quickly say, when you see the CD-ROM, all the design elements that you're seeing are Angela and Oz Studios. They're nothing that I've contributed at all. I was just giving her the actual content. You gave us a lot of support, too. So in understanding the audience that Andrea just described, it was our objective to make this orientation experience fun for these students. So we show pictures of the school. The QuickTime VRs also make it a lot of fun. And again, we show diversity in the imagery. It was important that this information was approachable and friendly and also hints at the benefits of attending Santa Clara University Law School. So what we did was we created our own photographs, and we took a sophisticated design approach, we think, in shooting collages of familiar objects and familiar to students. We use this as a vehicle to support the orientation content, as you'll see. So I guess we can go right to the CD group itself. OK. All right. 
So once a user launches a CD, it automatically opens the presentation. Everybody see this? Do you want the lights down a bit? Or yeah, the lights down? Help. Okay. I'm not familiar 100% with this room. I have a feeling that the lights might go all off. So this is the main screen, and this is what I was, I was meaning about um, taking a collage, photographic collage approach. Now every element in this photograph was, or in all the photographs, were considered with the audience in mind. For example, the coffee cup. We felt, you know, these are busy law students; they can relate to caffeine. Um, <laughs> ABA Journal is, is a publication that they can all relate to as well. Um, this handwritten font that we use is, is a consistent theme throughout the piece, and it's a, a way we try to make the piece friendly and inviting. Um, also, this font that we used for help desk information, it's, it's a typewriter font. So we're really going against the, I guess, the high-tech you know, style that you see a lot with, with typography. Which actually, given that we are in Silicon Valley, is a little bit ironic. <laughs> right. And it actually was nice, like I said, uh, I gave all the content to Angela and then she came back with this and it was actually nice to see uh, not a, a, a type uh, version, but an actual handwritten version. I thought it was a little more appealing. It was an attempt to be more appealing to the students. Exactly. Did you want to go into the quick time VR here? Uh, or? Sure, actually, let me talk quickly about the video. The one thing about this is I wanted this CD-ROM to cover, it is only covering right now computer services orientation materials, okay? The, the dream still, as I'll talk about at the end, is to get all the law school back onto the CD, all the departments, and have it be fully electronic. Um, in the attempt to get the students to spend time on the CD, I've added kind of add-ons that have nothing to do with computer services that are an attempt to just kind of get them feeling excited to come to school, <laughs> if that's possible. Um, <laughs> little do they know <laughs> what's, what they're about to happen. But um, so I, for example, this little Santa Clara is, I don't know if you're aware, but there's missions that run, the um, Spanish missions run all up and down the uh, coast of, of California. Uh, Santa Clara is fortunate to have one of the missions actually located on our campus. And so this is just a kind of a quick time look inside that. Uh, now some of these students are arriving have actually never spent time on campus or, at, or if they have, have not gone into the church. So and it's um, just kind of a neat little piece that I wanted to let them know that it's there and they, even if they, you know, they're not religious or have anything and they're Fear of churches, they should still walk <laughs> into that <laughs> because it's beautiful if for no other reason. So the other thing I've added, and this took quite a bit of time and coordination, was four videos by four different members of the law school community. Our dean, who is actually brand new, he starts uh, next week, I believe. Uh, he's from Dean Polden is from the University of uh, Memphis. Um, I got a faculty member and an alumni and a student. And actually, let's just open the student one. Um, and all, I won't play the whole thing. It's just to kind of show you what there is. Um, Nikki Pope is kind of a leader among the students. And um, she's kind of a very energetic, fun person. And she was volunteered to do this for us. She's just talking about why she applied to Santa Clara and giving her advice to incoming one else. What is important to uh, to do and what you should avoid and things like that. And each of these clips is about two minutes in length. And it's just a way of getting the students in. They get to meet a student that's already there and has that student say, you know, read. 
or something like that. That's the big, I think that was her biggest uh, advice, is to do as much summer reading as possible because once you go to law school, you're never going to read a fun book again. So, <laughs> uh, that was her, actually, that was her advice to this. And it was just kind of a fun thing. So that was all on the front page. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at the top here, that's our, our navigation area. And, and these are the four main categories, four main areas. We're going to start with the electronic resources. And again, we're trying to get into the minds of, of these students, and this is what we imagined their desk to look like, cluttered and a Coke can on top of a, a CDs and half-eaten fortune cookie and Chinese fast food Chinese food spilling out of the box. Um, we use these Post-it notes as a navigational area along with this notepad to introduce the content. So if you click on any of these Post-its, It'll change out the information to the right. And just, just a, a, a side note, this fortune reads, ignorance never settles a question. We thought it was very appropriate because that was the actual fortune in that cookie that we opened and we're photographing. <laughs> <laughs> very weird. <laughs> From uh, the law school's point of view, this is the real heart of the, uh, the CD, um, electronic resources. These seven little post-its are the seven areas that we want to make sure that they, they see and go into. Um, Groupwise is our, our forever failing email system. Um, of course, we have our smart print, which we charge them uh, eight cents a copy. Clarinet is our intranet system. And eCampus is, of course, the university's uh, system for checking grades and things like that. Oscar is our online catalog. Cali is, of course, this, and it talks about um, the CD rounds that Cali gives out, uh, the wireless connection, and then Lexus and Lexus. Um And it gives a short description there. Um, and then from there, you can either click to go out to, for example, Clarinet. If you click here, it'll take you out to the, the, um, the website itself. Okay, so that they can then go from there to whatever they need. Um, or, alternatively, they can click on a PDF, which will open up, which is embedded in the CD-ROM. And this is really the heart of, of our orientation to them. When we march them into a classroom and sit for one hour, we are teaching them everything that's written on this. And it has all the links. It has what to do to set up your wireless card, what to do to set up the network, what to do for everything. Um, so this is the level that we're hoping to get them all down to. And that kind of that design appeal is an attempt and a hope to get them to this. Um, I should say the one benefit so far to this is this is the first year where computer services, I, we're completely out of the orientation loop. I don't have to attend any of the meetings this year. And um, it's been very nice. And actually, <laughs> just before I left, uh, the library contacted me because they saw that I wasn't involved in orientation and wanted to get on to this for this year. Yeah, I told them that it was, it was not possible. I mean, I took two years to get to this. You can't just in a month hop on and put all your stuff and, and then avoid the rest of the orientation. Meetings. So uh, but I'm more than happy to have them because I'll talk about it at the end, get on, uh, be, become an element of this for the following year. But they got to sit through them this year. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next section we're going to show is tour. And um, just to set it up a little bit, Santa Clara is conveniently located next to uh, public transportation, and it's called Caltrain. And so the collage for that one was pretty obvious. We wanted to show a, a schedule, tickets, um, half-eaten bagel, and again, more caffeine. There's the Caltrain tickets right there. So then this is a, the, an actual visitor's guide that Santa Clara University has. And it, it's a campus map, but we really wanted to focus in on the law buildings. So the users would land on this screen. And they're able to navigate and see the different QuickTime VRs that are um, outside of the buildings. So we have four here. You click on that one right there. Which one? The lowest one. Let's show this that one. one. Center of campus, yeah. okay. So you can see. This is kind of our center of the campus. On a winter day, I should tell you. 
buildings and uh, I'll just briefly go through a couple of them. This is Bergen Hall and in, on this on this uh, I guess floor plan we have two quick on VRs and we wanted to show floor plans to give uh, the student an idea of, of where these quick time VRs were shot. So here's another two. This is Bannon Hall. There's two here. Was there one Within these, do you want to show? Uh, why don't you just open up the, the room one uh, right there, the lecture room. This one? This, one. Here. As you, this area, the CD around the tour area, really has not, again, nothing to do with computer services and orientation. Um, but again, it just it's an a, a attempt to appeal to the students to spend time on the CD around so they get down into how to configure for wireless. Um, and it's also just a kind of a way of of reinforcing several weeks before they show up that they, um, they should be excited about going to school, that it is actually an attractive place and they made the right decision and no, they shouldn't have gone to Stanford Law. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but um, actually if they had the chance, I'm sure they'd go there. <laughs> but um, so it's just it, this area, and that's what I was saying earlier, if you, you tackle this, you don't have to put these in, but it's fun because it, it, it lends uh, creativity to the project and it, um, it really helps the student. I, I'm hoping. I mean, these things, we're manufacturing a thousand of them next week and they get mailed out. Um, the, the hope is in September after they're all settled in and are off and they're running with their classes, we're going to do a survey of the students to find out what they thought of this so that we can develop it from there. So. The next section is first day, and um, this calendar is, is actually open to the first day of orientation, is that right? Mm -hmm. August 18th? Oh, no, it's, yeah. Or is it yeah. first day of school? Uh, August 18th is first day of orientation. Okay. So um, there are four main areas here to the left they could click on and get an introduction to the content. And again, items within this collage that we felt students can relate to is, you know, a cliff bar, um, REI catalog, um, a Montblanc pen, and you know their, their ID, student ID, which is their passport on campus. This, um, again, from the law school point of view, is, is very important. Um, this is something that, that was added on that is uh, given to them during orientation. They have to know, of course, what their re re uh, required reading is before the first day of class and stuff like that. This is an attempt to just kind of short circuit that and get it to them earlier than the first day of orientation. Um, I have to say as an aside, I just, I was so excited when I got this back from Angela to see, for example, just this page to see the, you know, the clip bar there and um, the little no sticky thing that says study group on <laughs> Thursday. And, um, I think that was just great little creative things that Angela and our studios has put in. Um, that just make this so appealing and it, just, it really jazzed me on this, this whole thing. Yes? You mentioned that you needed internet connectivity for it. Yes. If someone decides that they forgot a book or something, the reading is that online or is that yep. for everyone to see? All of this, all, for example, um, orientation schedule, required reading, book list, all go out to a web page that's on our website, on the law school website. So yeah, they don't have to go through the CD round to get to that. They just go to the website and there's area there for first day also. Okay. And last section. The last section is facilities. <coughs> and um, here you see a cork board. And we chose a cork board because it really gave us a lot of flexibility to us what we can put on the cork board. Um, we, we dug up an old postcard that I sent from Italy a long time ago and used Photoshop and cleaned up with one side and, and used it as the content area. Um, the main categories are here to the right. and. As you see, as I'm clicking the postcard behind it, the picture changes. So it was, it was a great way for us to show more pictures. It actually shows what it is. So if you click on um, Drummond's or Benson Center, it actually shows the Benson Center in the background. Um, just other details like a, 
a picture of a luxury a luxury car. We figure these are aspiring <laughs> professionals here. Um, a sense of diversity is shown in a, a business card for an Indian restaurant, um, pictures, and this Dilbert comic strip that also has a law theme. Uh, the last part of this that I wanted to end with is the credits page. You don't really know what's involved in a project until you see or understand how many people are involved. So uh, Andrew Griffith and David Armstrong are our clients, and um, their, their business card is shown up here. Myself, Stephen Fukud, and Erwin Kwong make up Oz Studio, and we are primarily responsible for the project management, all the animations, and the design and concept of design of this CD. We worked with a writer named Lori Wirtz, um, a photographer named Bill Leung, and a, a person that helped us with the CD-ROM production. Her name is June Reef. Okay. Um, so that's it, in, really, in a nutshell. The, um, the last thing I want to kind of talk about is, and I've already kind of mentioned all everything for this section, one way or another, gave it away, um, and that's the future uses. Um, the university is now interested to see this final product that they paid for uh, and see if it is workable for us. And if it is, they are very seriously considering doing it for the undergraduate uh, level. The reason they're doing it at that level is a little different. Um, they just have too much information that they have to get across in too short a time. And orientation for them has gotten larger and larger. And we want to start to scale back by getting certain departments out. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, so that's been kind of the next step of where this is going. As far as the law school, we're going to manufacture a thousand of these. We're sending them out uh, the end of July, several weeks before, well, two weeks before orientation. Uh, they, we will then do a survey of the students in the second and third week of September to find out what can be improved upon this. Um, I'm also now that it's final can go back to the associate dean and the departments and say, look how great this is. Isn't this exciting? And um, wouldn't it be fun <laughs> next year? <laughs> wouldn't it be fun next year to get out of the orientation altogether like we did this year and let the students do what they want on orientation? Um, so my hope is that we, the, you know, the, this will first page, this front page will be modified for us <laughs> then to have like computer services and then a library and dean's office or whatever and then it just expands from there. Um, and then of course the other idea is that to get you guys to think about it and doing it in your own schools and if you do, I was, Angela and I are more than happy to, to answer any of your questions on that and actually with that let me open up for questions and I saw a hand back there. Yeah, that is, that's very good um, because, and that's why I also spent time going through the process because the idea was, it's one thing to have an idea, it's another thing to implement. And implementation in law schools and academia in general is very difficult and it's very time consuming. Um, and there's just small things like I envisioned that we would, you know, with, when we the very first meeting was we just burn these CDs ourselves. But then 350 of those, and then you'd have to buy you know, special equipment for that. Um, 
and you know we just don't have the time and resources to do that. Um, and in the end, if I, we we end up with a thousand of them anyway, uh, two years down the road. It's amazing how the process changes. So that'd be good to, to explore that. Any other questions? Um, the funding came through in late fall of last year. So, um, and then there was a little bit of a lag time while I tried to track down the non-existent <laughs> uh, consultant. But I think it was... For, for the design and, and um, creation and production, about, about three to four months. Yes? And what was the final budget? You want to answer that? Sure. Well... When we met uh, Andrew, we just, just a well, yeah, I don't want to get into the whole story, but we, we took on this project as a kind of experiment, and we had personal interest in this, so um, monetarily it wasn't a huge driving force for us. I think if we were to uh, do this again, it would cost anywhere from eighteen to thirty thousand dollars, and and that range is really dependent on the the level of content that's given to us, you know, does it need to be rewritten? Also, photography, do we need to hire a photographer? Can we work with existing photo photography? Um, so it really depends. Okay, it, seems, it seems incredibly reasonable to me. Oh, good. It's <laughs> <laughs> 40,000, remember? <laughs> the one thing I have to say, um, and I'm not speaking for Angela, but from my side, that, and for you guys, it really helps to be prepared going into this and not change things around after you get going. Um, that adds to cost. Um, there's little things that you know you get through. You know, and I, um, you know, the PDFs, for example, have proven to be a little bit of a nightmare for me because I took last year's and you know you edited them and they looked great, and then some of the links changed on Clarinet, our intranet, and so I had to go back and change all those links on our PDFs and that, you know, it'd be nice if that was just taken care of once and for all. And so that's my advice, do it just once. I'm sorry, does that budget figure include your uh, duplication and mailing uh, costs? On the high end, it would. Okay. Oh, mailing, I'm not sure. No, no the mailing take is the law schools. Um, that I don't know, I just give it to admissions and they send it out to all the incoming students. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to actually work my way this way. I think our studio has really added so much to this. Just okay. the corkboard, yeah. changing images. I think that um, it's really engaging and you want to get lost in it. You want to see if I mouse over here what's going to change. Um, but the other the question I would have for you is if this were a orientation <coughs> committee project, do you think it would be as successful? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the last of that? It was information. <laughs> if you had to involve everybody else in orientation, yeah. to get them involved in this project at the beginning, to see it I I think it would be. It would just be a lot longer in the process. <laughs> Offhand, because of this project, I actually, um, I don't know how many of you have seen Duke, or if anybody's here from Duke Law School, actually, um, or the university. Duke University has this great CD-ROM that they send out. It's a flash presentation of about two minutes. That uh, it, it talks about their annual fund, and it's a, a fundraising um, mechanism, actually, for them. And I absolutely loved it, and we're thinking of doing not the same thing, but a similar thing for Santa Clara. Um, now, this involves the alumni office and the development and the dean's office, and that's kind of the next big kind of CD-ROM project we're gearing up for. And that was we just give out to donors. When the dean travels around, he gives this out to donors and things like that. Um, that is already proving to be more difficult to maneuver, just adding on those two departments. I mean, it's very, you could, being head of the department and having it only be for computer services, it's very easy to act quickly and just tell Angela, no, get rid of that, or no, we add, let's add that. But it would be more difficult. So. A real quick comment to follow up on that. I think your big advantage is that the design Yeah. So if we go, when it goes to that orientation, towards that true dream of a full orientation process, 
It would be very difficult. It's going to be difficult for me to still control this completely. I mean, eventually it's going to be rust. It's going to be a committee. So I'm actually going to switch over to this side here for a second. And then back. Oh. Yes, actually, if you guys want to, um, probably the easiest, if you, is, there's the sign-up sheet. If you sign up for that, I'll email you because it's a web-based survey we use, and I'll just send you the URL, and you can see exactly what the response was and how many students responded. We found that but we offer off three gift certificates to boarders for $50 each, uh, random, and because uh, our initial surveys, we'd only get five or eight students, and now we get several hundred students because they all want the... <laughs> The, uh, the gift certificate. And for $150, it seems like a, a cheap way of getting feedback. So With, with the CD-ROM, what uh, are you planning to do different this year once you have the CD-ROM for students? For next year, you mean? Will we well, this fall, I guess. Is that when you're going to... The C yeah, the CD goes out this so, fall. So how is your orientation going to be different from yeah. the previous time? Uh, uh, computer uh, services is not in it at all this time. So there, I haven't reserved a lab. I don't have a presence in here. Nope. I don't have to go to the, the meetings, the pre-planning meetings. Um, it's just going to be another work week for us. And all we're planning to do is, is have a, the same as any other week in law school, is they have a, students that they have a problem, sign up out front, and they can see one of the PC support specialists and, and go from there. So we're completely out of it. We don't have to march them through eight-hour days of, in a lab. Yes, I've thought of that, um, but at this point, I don't know if we're going to do that. I'm just going to see how it goes with the CD-ROM. The talk with the annual fund CD-ROM we're thinking of doing, that is definitely going to have a mirror web page also. Um, but I, we've talked about putting a mirror web page of this up too, but I, at this point, I just want to see how the CD does. Um, it's one of those things where the survey comes back and says, oh, we, you know, if it was a web page, we would have looked at it, but I didn't bother with the CD. Then I will definitely pursue that. Yeah, they, they, they can't get an email account set up unless they go through this. And they can do that from home. Then. Yes. Though I've been told that it can only happen in the labs, but I'm trying to pursue if that is indeed the case. That is something that's just come up in the last week with our larger university IT department, but i got to pursue that. Um, that and also um, I think that is, oh, the eCampus system. Um, is in there. I think uh, this would be their first introduction to the eCampus system before they get to or, uh, orientation. Uh, our records department also gives them information about eCampus, uh, but this would be predating that several weeks. Um, the other thing that's nice about this is the uh, the required le reading um, and what was the other? There was a required reading on the book list. Those are given to the students the first day of orientation. Now, that's only a week before school starts. I mean, orientation is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and school starts the following Monday. By giving this to them several weeks before, they already know what their reading is several weeks before even showing up so they can get a little head start. Was there any thought of putting an assignment in Sorry? Is there any thought of putting an assignment in For this, it's one of those things I'll have to see how it goes. If it, I find that no one used the CD, um, and I find myself back in the orientation process next year. I think I will definitely, before going into the old way of doing it, go through the work through the dean's office to make it required that they have to turn in something that's on this um, next time. So if nothing else, they had to pop it in and print that out. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Actually, we're done at this moment. Uh, we just let me finish up with one last question in the back. Yes. Yeah. Um, we realize that uh, packaging is an important part of this as well because uh, this will show up in the mail. And originally, we thought we were going to do a paper a sleeve, but that will eventually tear, come apart and CD will fall out. 
So we decided to use this transparent plastic case, and we spent time to make the silk screen on top of the CD even more attractive so that it shows through this plastic case, and it becomes something they would keep and use. Yeah, the actual CD itself looks like one of the CDs you buy at a record store. It's very nicely designed on the front. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.